Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that is rooted within me. Good afternoon and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. And today is Memorial Day Celebration 240. Our call-in number is 646-200-4169. Press 1 to talk to Michael. That will put you in queue. Chat room's really slow coming up today. Um, it's open, but there's only one person in there. So anybody that's listening, if you'll press refresh, see if that brings you in. We usually have a full room. And David is with us today. I think Dr. Tim's going to be um, somewhere else today. But... Welcome, Michael. Delighted. Hello, Thank Michael. You. I'm here. And we are delighted to be sharing this space with you today. And we're here to support you in learning the process of forgiveness. Jeannie, how is your throat doing? It is very sore. <laughs> I just yeah. I've been well. breathing Ryan and uh, felt some energy shift breathing him. Um, he's going to do me after the show. So, awesome, good. Well, that'll probably make a big shift. And so, uh, we just and we send our love and our support and hold space for uh, for everything that you're processing out to uh, to move out and be done with it. So, welcome to the show. And our reference to Memorial Day is, uh, as we do every day, a request of you. We have a a a purpose in that request and the purpose is that you become part of the team that changed the world and that means that we invite you today to take one thing one issue one situation where you are willing to Take responsibility for what's happening in your life. One situation where there's some form of hostility or fear that you're probably blaming on someone else, or pardon me, your mind is blaming on someone else, or what's called your mind is blaming on someone else. And we're going to invite you today, instead of buying your mind to lie that what's going on inside of you is caused by someone else, we're actually going to ask you, if you would, to apply the tool of forgiveness to that situation. What would that look like? Well, if you go to the website, www.whyagain.com, on the right-hand side there's a link that says Download Worksheets. If you download the first four links, that will give you the whole forgiveness story. It will guide you through the sheet. It will give you the actual sheet. Forgiveness, suffice to say, is not a tool for letting other people off the hook because there's certain painful content within your mind and body. Forgiveness is the tool with which you remove those things. Now, we've been tricked, we've been taught, we've been given a whole set of language of they did it to you, it's all their fault, but it's okay. Things will be good if you just forgive them. And that's an absolute, total, complete fraud. We have not been taught to forgive. We've been taught pardoning in place of forgiveness. Well, what's wrong with that, Michael? Well, if you pardon someone for what's going on inside of you, you do nothing to change what's going on inside of you. If you do nothing to change what's going on inside of you, then you get to live the title of my book. Why is this happening to me again? So we're looking to support you getting past that dynamic in your world. We're looking to support you in getting to the point where you actually live a full-blown human life. What's a full-blown human life? What are you talking about, Michael? 
Well, when you recognize that a human being is the active presence of love, and, and if you have any question about the definition of human life, what we ask you to do is to simply remember the last time you held a newborn child. And when you recognize the essence of the newborn child, you will recognize that human life is the presence of love. You and I are designed to live as this awesome presence of love. That's our most natural state. Now, the culture says, no, we are going to destroy that in you. We want you to live out of our hostility and fear and fulfill our purposes for you, not live a human life. So our request is that you today take responsibility for one issue where there's some form of hostility or fear, and you forgive. You remove that hostility or fear. And in so doing, return to a human life. That's our request of you. If we can get enough people through the gate, you know, you go back 2,000 years ago and the physicist named Yeshua said this, a little leavening leavens the whole loaf. I don't think he was talking bread. He said that because he understood the critical mass principle of physics. It was only going to take a few who would walk through the gate. It was interesting. I just had a conversation with a gentleman a couple of hours ago, and uh, he had uh, been given some guidance and and you've, all, you've heard me before say that one of my early mentors say, said that it would only take eight people to actually step into living a human life, to change the whole dynamic of what's going on on planet Earth. Well, uh, I, I had shared with this gentleman the, a piece of information that came to me last week where the Pope actually uh, put out or released a piece of information from Lourdes and that... Mary had told Bernadette that 2012, and this is a piece that was sealed. I don't understand why they sealed it. I'm sure somebody had their reasons. But this was sealed back when this happened. And well, how long ago was that? 60, 70 years ago, whatever. But it was just released that they said that 2012 would be the year that people would lay down their arms, that men would lay down their weapons. We may be right on the verge of critical mass. As I was speaking to this gentleman, he had had some communication, and you know it's, it's interesting. This just came out of the blue, came out of nowhere. Uh, there was no conversation between us about what one of my early mentors said, but one of my early mentors said that all it would take would be eight people who would go through that gate to living as a true human being. And this gentleman said that he had been told by Mary just recently that there were seven people who had actually made that transition. We're right on the cusp. One more person. Who's that person going to be that actually lives a human life, that actually truly lives as the active presence of love in this insane world? That's what we're inviting you to do. And when that happens, what will take place is conflict will disappear from planet Earth. Blame will disappear from planet Earth. We'll stop playing the game of, What's going on inside of me is all your fault, and you better change or else. I'll kill you, and there's the root of war. We'll shift into, oh, I have some pain or fear going on inside of me. I think I need some support for healing. Would you support me? Now we have someone who, instead of doing war and blaming others, is able to be a space of support and is able to ask for support for healing. That's where we want to go with this work. That's our request of you when we suggest that you take on the role of the team that changed the world. So thank you for being with us. We're delighted to be here to support you. Gene, do we have any um, callers or anything happening in the chat room to be aware of? No, we don't have any questions. No hands are up. They said they're just listening in the chat room. Uh, we have several people on the switchboard. David's turned on, but nobody has their hands up. Okay, well, David, do you have anything to share with us? Well, you know, I'm reminded of the story that you talk about in your book at the end of it where it talks about will you make a difference and uh, the story about uh, tell me the weight of the snowflake. Um, do you have that in front of you, David? Um, I do have it in front of me. Yep. 
I can I can get it up on my computer pretty fast, but if you've got it handy. Okay. Hold just a second. Let me get I don't have a here. Right here with me. Pardon me? I say I don't have a book right here with me. Will you make a difference? Tell me the weight of a snowflake, a hawk, ask a wild dove. Nothing more than nothing was the answer. In that case, I must tell you a marvelous story, said the hawk. I sat on the branch of a fir, close to its trunk. It began to snow, not heavily, not a raging blizzard. No, just like in a dream, without any violence. Since I had nothing better to do, I counted the snowflakes settling on the twigs and needles of my branch. Their number was exactly 3,741,952 when the next snowflake dropped onto the branch. Nothing, more than nothing, as you say, and the branch broke off. Having said that, the hawk flew away. The dove, since Noah's time and authority on peace, thought about the story for a while and finally said with resolve, perhaps only one person's voice is lacking for peace to come about in the world. So, just a nice little story to connect with what it is that you're referring to, the seven people or the energy, the level, where is it at, all of the, you know, uh, to me, it's like, where is that going to come from? I have no idea. No, I don't know if it's me or uh, if I'm one of the eight or what difference does that even make? It's just about continuous in that motion and into that energy field to strengthen it so that it does open up. So that's one of the reasons to do it. Well, and that's exactly why we're here, to support and inspire each person to become. You know, Paul spoke about we see as though through a glass darkly. And if we see through that glass darkly, then we're not fit or able to do what our true purpose is here on the earth. And so as we choose to forgive, as we remove what never belonged, then we are capable of living out of and seeing clearly what our purpose is and what our true human life is. And that's the process of forgiveness. There are those who benefit when people are unconscious and in hostility and fear because people don't live their purpose. They make great slaves. When you choose to fulfill your purpose, then in so doing, you are able to express what your human life is. And again, Anytime you happen to forget what human life is, just imagine holding a newborn child. You know exactly what human life is. And that's what we're here to restore to every mind, heart, and being on the planet. As I said, one of my mentors, this goes back all four and a half decades ago, said eight people. Today, a gentleman I was speaking to, totally unrelated, it wasn't even part of the conversation, but he said he got the message, and it was out of the blue. He just said, well, his thought was, well, this is probably some sort of a symbolic number. And when he said it, and, and you know, you look at this piece of prophecy, 2012, is a weapon, 12, the weapons will be laid down. You look at what the Mayans said, that there was going to be not the end of the world, but a shift in the dynamic of the world. And the shift is that from um, power and control to integrity and ethics. And they they said it was going to be 2012. It's interesting how all those things are coming together. And then to hear this gentleman today say seven people are at that stage, I don't think it's a symbolic number. Maybe all we need is one more person to pass through the gate. And that's going to be the critical mass that will shift the whole game for everybody. So we invite you to pick up and do your work. Be part of the team that changed the world. Every person that removes from themselves and, and stops the blame game. You know, when, when, when we're in this place where, well, I'm angry because you did this. I'm angry because you did. I'm sad because you did this. I regret because of that. I, I am terrified of this. I have trepidation and fear about that. None of that's true. That's all a lie of the mind. The bottom line is, 
You have what you have because you have it, because it's in you. You experience what you experience because that you have the capacity to generate and produce that experience. When you truly enter into forgiveness, you remove the capacity to enter into that quality of experience. Everything changes. So we're here to support you and everything changes. Changing, pardon me. And if you have a question or a thought for us, we would love to hear your sweet voice. Our phone number is 646-200-4169. And we invite you to call in and ask your question. Is there something we can do to support you in understanding the process of forgiveness? And in the meantime, we are in Sarasota, Florida. We'll be doing our second workshop tonight. We had an awesome support group last night, absolutely fabulous support group last night. And tonight we'll be doing the workshop uh, from 7 to 9.30. We'll be doing Purpose, Personal Power, and Commitment. And then tomorrow night, uh, 7 to 9.30, Wednesday night, will be the Circle of Life and How to Play It. Thursday, Getting the Stress You Need. And Friday, Communication, Did You Hear What I Think I Said? There will all be free open workshops. If you're in the Sarasota area, we would be delighted to have you come and join us. And uh, we'll, in two weeks, we'll be up in uh, Tampa area at Harmony Center doing another week. Uh, we'll be in Ocala the following week. Second week of March, we'll be in Boca Raton, Florida. The first week in April, beginning on the 6th, Good Friday, we'll be starting a nine-day residential intensive. So if you're ready to do some other work, we've got several different options come and play. We'd be delighted to see you and delighted to support you. And if you have a question, we'd love to hear your voice, 646-200-4169. Jeannie, do we have any questions or thoughts in the chat room? Or callers? We do have a caller, and it's area code 954. You're on the air. Good afternoon, Michael and Jeannie. Hi. Well, hey there. Who are we speaking with? My name is Sarah, and I am the person... The tall lady that came to the Science of Mind in Fort Lauderdale for two evenings to hear you speak. Right. And then came up to the Heart Painter. Okay. Oh, yes, of course. Remember? Okay, I do. great. Okay, awesome. So um, when I first started looking at your your worksheets and things, it was a little bit overwhelming. But last night I um, downloaded the first four that you recommended that have reality management. Right. Okay. And, um, well, and I had a situation come up on Friday where there was like five little incidents through the day where there was like just some icky feeling, you know, from the transaction of talking to people and feeling dissed or puked on and this, you know, and that I not appreciated. And I thought that's the kind of thing I go is talking about that is could be processed through worksheets. Right. Exactly. So, but yeah, but but I was too busy. I couldn't stop. So, I am going to well, begin this with this and memorize this is the what the child's version, okay? And and get the core of this down so I can quickly process and release these little fast ones that come up. And of course, there's there's some very deep issues behind this, okay, that need, to, need the long forms and all that. But I've noticed on the original long form that I downloaded last night to print out for my booklet, and there's a little box at the bottom on the right-hand side that says mental short form. So um, this looks so clear here, and it starts with, my reality is my responsibility, and it comes from my personal and genetic mind energy. That thing, the number two, is I locate and cancel my goal, which was to be appreciated by these people that I work with, okay, which they don't think they should have to do. Um, and then you have number three, which has Aramaic words, push up, please assist me to reset Rachma and Kuba, Change my reality, its effects, and learn the truth. So, last night I kind of reworded that to all English. So, and here's, here's how I re reworded it. So, you tell me how you like this, okay? God, please help me to reset my perceptions and intentions, to change my reality, its effects, and to learn the truth. Okay, by you. Works for me. 
works for me, and I would suggest that you do those those sheets, especially on the bigger issues in writing. Because, you know, how, what was the name? Paul Simon had that song a few decades back, Slip Sliding Away. When we start moving into the deeper, more hidden parts of our minds, you know, psychology tells us that 95% of the thoughts we think are unconscious. And when you start to approach one that has pain attached, the tendency will be to just unconsciously flip into something else. So I suggest when you're working with those bigger issues, and that sounds like a major issue to me, that you actually do them in writing and you will find yourself going deeper and deeper and deeper. In our uh, uh, session last night, our, our Mind Shifter support group last night, we had a young lady who, came, who brought up an issue that had to do with a current event in her life. She's a woman who's probably in her 50s. And uh, she brought up this issue that had to do with being dissed by somebody. And she ended up going through, and she, she volunteered to be the, uh, the example, and we walked her through the worksheet. She ended up doing four different worksheets, and the, the bottom line result was being a child and having had her parents die and being taken into a foster home where the basic message was, if you're not perfect, you'll be put out on the street. That's what she ended up dealing with. Now, oh. if you just, in your mind, the tendency will be for the mind. And, and the way she described it, she said, it's like, I realize now that this has been totally unconscious for me. And she said, it's like I've been carrying around or pulling around. She actually put her hand up over her shoulder. She said, it's like I've been pulling around this string of dead cats since I was a child, like over half a century. And when the mind starts to approach that, the tendency is, if you just do it in your head, whoops, don't look at that thought, get rid of it, forget you ever saw it, and it will instantly hide it away. If you're writing, you've got a written, written record, it'll take you to a whole other level. Well, believe me, there's some serious things going on here in my life right now. Um, I'm the one that told you I had decided to tithe my income from hearing Edwin Gaines on December 18th down at the Hollywood Unity, which, by the way, is a very nice place. I don't know if you've ever spoken there, but the, the Hollywood Unity, it's off the of Hollywood Boulevard, um, just a little bit east of I-95. Maybe, yeah, maybe you'd like to host one of your workshops. Yeah, I talked to the minister there a few weeks ago and and, uh, and asked if he'd be open. You know, we when we speak at a place like that, we pay our own expenses. We have no requirements of the church, and uh, our workshops are free, but there was no interest in doing that. So perhaps if you know the minister and you're involved in that church, you might just uh, open the door. We do have some time available, and we'd love to go back to Hollywood. I was there probably about eight or nine years ago, and uh, it was extremely successful. I think we could have an extremely successful time, and that some of the people who were in Fort Lauderdale would come and maybe help build the church. So. So if you can open that door. Right, because the Fort Lauderdale Unity is just, you know, they're going through a big transition with uh, selling the old building and looking for new headquarters. So um, I'm not that, that involved with them, but uh, it, it just I happened to hear Edwin there, you know. So anyway, um, the, the last, I, I plan to work on these things in depth in the writing, okay? Then number four on this same little box, okay, the last little statement I have a question for you about what you intended to accomplish with this little statement. So it says, I re reconnect with my source. That's obvious. Then ask for restoration to love. Okay, that's, that's obvious too. And love to blank. I offer you blank. What are we supposed to fill into the blanks, Michael? Well, the idea there, and you know, if you on the the third download under that download worksheets is a, an MP3. Actually, the third and the fourth are two different MP3s where we walk yes. somebody on the radio show through the whole process. So all the instructions are there that you can access anytime. But the idea of that step is that first of all, I need to get back connected to my human life. I'm going to restore the condition of love to my mind as I look at and perceive this person, and then from that state of being, I'm going to set a conscious goal toward whoever it is I'm doing this worksheet on. So when I start the worksheet, I've got a certain object of attention in mind. Let's say it's a person. I look at the goal that I hold for them. I collapse the projection on them by canceling the goal. 
And then I reset love and I go back and I've let go of a goal that I had for them. Now I set a conscious goal toward them. So that might be, like, let's say for this, this situation last night, this this fellow dissed this woman uh, in, a, in a particular situation. So the goal that she came up with, the bottom line when she got down to that step is, I'm going to communicate in a gentle, loving voice with you. So that would be the new goal. He had spoken to her rather harshly and asked her what was wrong with her in a situation where it was totally unjustified. And so her commitment to him was to offer him what she wanted. When you start offering to people what you want, you source the energy that you want in your field. You get the original, they get the carbon copy. That's the idea of that step. When you offer to other people what it is you want, you want appreciation, kindness, compassion. Then you get the original, they get the carbon copy. That's correct. So okay. you get the appreciation and the compassion. You know, there's a wonderful line in The Course in Miracles. It's one of my favorites, and it says, only what you have not given is missing here. And so many people are kind of like the person who sits in front of the fire and says, fire, when you give me heat, I'll light this match. People say to life, give me love and I'm going to withhold mine until you do. As opposed to, if I withdraw my love from another, I'm the one who gets ripped off for the experience of of a human life, the experience of love. When I restore the presence of my being in my physiology, I get to experience the presence of love. When I offer it to someone who I'm perceiving through my own glass darkly, By offering it to them, I get to clean up the part of me that tarnishes my image of them. And you will always 1,000% of the time win when you hold love present. Now, those who live in a world of fear and hostility and, and and relationship is just a cheap exchange program say, well, I'm not going to love somebody because they might not love me back. And then I'll be ripped off for the experience of love. No. When you choose not to be love, you get ripped off for the experience of love. And the only experience of love you will ever have will be when you experience your own true human life. You can't get the experience of somebody of love from somebody else. It's just not possible. You can get approval, and the world's cheap copy of love is approval, but you can't get love from them. So when you offer it, you receive it. It's called the law of giving and receiving. As you sow, you reap. Well, what right. To, to, to what, stay what, what in love, you? even when dealing with these people that don't want to appreciate you, you still stay in love, you still stay in respect to them, and just let them be who they are. Because if, if they don't want to appreciate the church organist, they think this is a person that should work for very low wages or whatever, and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, then that's what they're going to do, and I'm not going to make them think differently. Not, exactly. I'm not. And, and you cannot be hurt by them disapproving or dissing you. But if you've been dissing yourself when they diss you, then you'll experience hurt. And what most people will say, well, you really hurt me. No, you showed me my hurt. Thank you. Now I'm going to forgive as to my hurt, and now you can say or do what you want, and there is hurt in me. But if there's hurt in me, anything or anyone can bring it up. But if if I'm in denial that it's an internal experience, that it's produced in my physiology, that's why I'm feeling it, if I deny that, then I'll always pretend and I'll hook my hurt up to what's happening in the external world. And now I can't remove my hurt because I think it's caused from outside of me. So one of the worksheets I might suggest you do is one where you have your own name in number 1A, and when you get down to the goal, you look at, or you have as a goal, I want to appreciate and respect myself. And then start to look at how many times in your life you violated that goal of appreciating and respecting yourself. 
it, it's in there. It, it's in there for sure. It's got. I got to clean it up. This is this is the path. You got it. This is how to do it exactly. You've got the tool in your hand, young lady. And you well, know we're going to be back. Thank you. I, I think I'm seeing. Of course, when you start tithing your income and you're really going to go with the path, you, you know, Catherine Ponder. I know you know this author. She uses a statement: "Christ in me is my freeing yep. power." You know, in the Open Your Mind to Receive book, it's one of the earlier chapters where you talk about releasing Christ in me is my freeing power. I think she's using Christ in me as your Ruka de Kusha, the active force of God, which you come into your being and clean up the error. Exactly, and it's an exact quote from the scriptures almost, where it says, Christ in you, your hope of glory. That, it, that power resides in you. Now, many of the churches have tried to take it out of you so that they become the authority and they run your life. And if you actually start to utilize that power in you, they will diss you and try to destroy you. Because all of a sudden, they're feeling weak and insecure. They don't have it, and they can't give it to you, but they keep you in the belief. But there's an exact quote, Christ in you, and that is the awesome, active presence of the love of God in you. And it's not a religious thing. We live, move, and have our being in this energy field called love, and it is in us. We are designed to be a device that expresses that. And if we're not, it's because we hold other gods. We hold rage and fear and grief and condemnation and put-downs as more important than our direct relationship with love. And the idea of the forgiveness process is to remove all the generations in us that ever believed that garbage, that God is anything other than love, that God ever held anything that even resembles punishment for you, because all punishment is done by ourselves. I love what Augustine said hundreds of years ago. He says, we are not punished for our sins, but by our sins. The word sin in Aramaic is an archery term, which means off the mark. When I put an energy in that's off the mark, wherever I put it in my tissue structure, I change the chemistry of that tissue, and the tissue starts to fall apart. When they said the wages of sin is death, that was not a religious idea. They were just telling you how physiology works. Again, sin being off the mark. If I put an energy that's off the mark, hate, fear, anger, grief, things that don't support human life, it destroys my cellular structure. When they said the wages of sin is death, they were saying, that was not a threat from the creator, they were saying the result of putting energy that's off the mark within your structure is you're going to die. You do it to yourself, all death. Go back again in the ancient scriptures. They said, with man, death began. We made the process up. It's become genetic. We've inherited it. We've been taught it. And every time you were taught something based in hostility or fear, which is satanic in the classic sense, the true classic sense, you are stepping outside of your relationship with love. Yeshua came to restore us to our relationship with love, and the fear mongers took his teaching over and continued a, a whole teaching based in fear. There is no fear in relationship with the Creator. It's interesting, I've, I've, I've confronted uh, preachers who talk about this fear God thing. They say, oh, well, well, what we really mean is you know, honor God or respect God or have awe for God. And in Aramaic, the word is have awe for the Creator. And, and then I, I want to go with it, you know, Yeshua says the power of life and death is in your words. Why are you using the word fear if you're saying you really mean something else? I know why you're doing it, because you have fear and terror in you, and your father within you is not love. And that's why you're promulgating that fear and terror, and why you will terrorize anybody who doesn't agree with you. And it's time for us to let that whole game go. The truth is we live, move, and have our being in this awesome, embracing power whose good pleasure it is to give us everything we ask for. The only reason we don't get it is because we've got different asking. Go back, I think it's in the book of James, they talk about you ask, but you do not ask a right. You do not ask a right because you've been brainwashed with fear and hostility. Forgive the fear and hostility, get on with the human life. That's what we're here to support. Thank you for spending a moment with me. Uh, several. Um, I'm looking at your card that I picked up at the Science of Mind Center, 
and there's an email address on here, uh, three three initials, M J R F. Yep. Why again? That's our website. Why again? You can write me there. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Absolutely delighted. Remember, we're at Science of Mind the uh, first week in or the second week in March. We'll hope to see you there. Uh, you most likely will. You know, I listened to your um, MP3 that you did with the lady that was a doctor uh, that had had her medical license yanked by the Oregon Board for right. treating the 16-year-old child that had the lymphomas, and she recommended nutrition as opposed to chemotherapy, and he he went into remission, got better, and he didn't have cancer anymore. And that was that was very powerful. Yeah, so, it's an awesome uh, show, isn't it? That's one of the most powerful worksheets I've ever seen anybody do. So we invite everybody to download that worksheet from whyagain.com. It's the third link under the download worksheet section. So cool. Well, it's a delight to speak with you. We hold the space, and uh, keep calling in. We appreciate your questions and thoughts. Yes, I, I've been on your chat room as, as Musicom. So that's so. anyway, yeah, I'll probably see you up at the Science of Mind. And now I want to let you go so you can take another caller. So thank okay. you. Okay, if you can open the door for Hollywood, we'd be delighted to come down there. I'll do my best. Okay, blessings, lots of love. Take care. Bye bye. I love it. I love it when we get callers who are doing their work. It's awesome. What a gift. So we don't have any other callers right now. Our caller number is six four six two hundred. 4169, press 1. That'll put you in queue to talk to Michael, ask questions, or make comments. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, there's everybody in the chat room is just listening. So, Cool. Well, let's take a look at, uh, at some other ideas uh, based in the work and, and recognize that, you know, when we were given that directive that we spoke about a few minutes ago, have love for the creator, for neighbor. In the Aramaic language, the word neighbor means anybody that you think about. A few oh, a few months ago, I heard a guy on television who was dissing this idea of, you know, who would follow a person who would tell you to love everybody. That's just stupid. And they don't have a clue what the man was saying. In Aramaic, the word that's been translated as love is the word rachma. Rachma is a filter or a condition in the mind that allows the mind to only use intentions keyed to love, and it is a gateway into which human life enters into what purports to be a human form. What the man was saying was, in order to protect your perceptual mind, there are rules, there are laws by which it operates. And the law is not fear. You go back and you listen. And again, many give us this whole fear trip. And and in the scriptures, it's very clear. You were not given a mind of fear. Stop it. You were given a sound mind based in the love of God. Based in the presence of this awesome human life, you were given a sound mind. Somebody wants to tell you you're something else. And somebody will try to prove it by getting you to believe their interpretation of the scriptures. Well, let's see you argue with this one. You were not given the spirit of fear. You were given a sound mind. Stop buying this lie that you are something less than the love of God. Give it up. And when you do, we have human life showing up on the earth and as it does the whole game is going to change the whole is going to change now if that doesn't make any sense to you then please dig out the word into the paper and forgive the dark past that those who build their theology belief systems on hostility and fear have fed into your mind the lie that has darkened the sound mind the creator gave you. The scriptures are clear. You were given by the creator a sound mind. Stop that other lie. Give it up. 
Now, somebody terrified you into believing that other lie. That's your forgiveness work, is to remove that terror, to remove that fear. There are rules by which you keep perception sound. This love of God neighbor, so as to maintain your human life, is the rule for sound perception. It's got nothing to do with your neighbor. It's got nothing to do with the creator. It's just saying that when you activate perception toward a particular object of attention, in order to create a game, you've got to keep this condition of rachma, of love, opening you. If someone taught you fear, then they closed that in you. It's time to go back to the original teacher who taught the rules for sound perception. Error in fear is an error. It is not the mind that was given to humans. And there is a mind in you that was called the mind that was in Christ. This isn't a religious idea. It is that there is this awesome presence of love in you. And when you allow that to stay open, then you maintain your human life. You get to live. Remember, how are we defining a human life? Hold the newborn child. Some active presence of love. Maintain that awesome active presence of love. And then there's an interesting phrase that's added on when they asked this man, Yeshua, what the law was. And again, this isn't religious ideas. This is just the way the mind and body work. So you were given a sound mind, and you were able to live in awe of the Creator, not fear. Fear interpretation is a lie. So you were told to live in awe of the Creator. And what it says, when he finishes that off, have love for the creator, for neighbor, that is Rachma for creator and neighbor, so to maintain self, your human life. And then he says, for upon this hangs the law in all its prophets. In other words, he's giving an instruction set for the only way to soundly and correctly perceive what was being taught by the law and the prophets. If you're in fear, you broke the first law. You will look at those scriptures. You'll find all kinds of justification for your terror and this horror that's going to rain down upon you. But that doesn't come from your sound mind. If you want to understand what those teachings said, then listen to the man who set up the protocol. Have rakma, love, for the creator, for the, your neighbor, so as to maintain your human life, and upon this hangs the understanding of the law and the prophets. Now you go back and you just take a look at whether or not this person who pounded something fearful into you met that criteria. If they didn't meet that criteria, they didn't understand the law and the prophets. Don't believe for a minute that they did. Now they may have terrorized you into believing what they had to say, And they may have implanted such fear in you that you go, oh, I couldn't ever question that because God would strike me dead. No, you'd come back to your sound mind, the one you were given by the creator. Again, this isn't theology. It's just it's what we humans were given. And the world teaches us to give up our human lives, to give up the awesome active presence of love that we are for something that is far, far inferior and far less than that awesome active presence of love. So we're here to support you in doing that work, and we're talking about real work. We're talking about putting the pen to the paper and cleaning up your mind, cleaning out all hostility and fear, so that perhaps for the first time in your life you can live the first law. And as you do, as as I shared with this young lady that did the uh, worksheet at the support group last night, this guy dissed her and she was angry and, you know, she had a whole bunch of stuff going on. What what happened was she went back and dealt with being rejected as a small child. And then came to a state of compassion for this guy who, what kind of pain is going on in this guy that he says something is nasty to her? As he says, what's wrong with you in that tone of voice? 
gee, this guy's got to be in a lot of pain. So she's able to see him differently through a sound mind rather than matching fear for fear, terror for terror, rage for rage. You don't get words of truth out of a raging mind. It never happened and never will. You get words of truth out of a sound mind. You were given one. If someone told you your identity was something other than the sound mind you were given by the creator, believe them not, for they have told you a lie. Come back to truth, your sound mind. And I join you in having that sound mind, and that's what we're here for. So, Jeannie, do we have any callers or anything happening in the chat room? We'd love to hear your voice if you've got a question or a thought for us. Our number is 646-200-4169. Excuse me, sweetie, go ahead. That's okay. I was just going to say there's nobody with their hand up. (coughs) Okay. We hold your throat in our hearts. (laughs) Thank you. And everything that needs to cleanse out of it is able to let go and let loose. I wish I were there to have my hands on your throat. Me too. Which some sort of didn't sound very good, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we support that energy just clearing and moving out and whatever's in that tissue and just hold the space for the whole family there. We appreciate you and Cherish for being in our lives. Thank you. Someone just put their hand up. Area code 607, you're on the air. Hey, Michael and Jeannie, how is everybody? Richard. Oh, Richard. We are well, sir. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Uh, uh, just calling in to say hello and see how you guys are doing. I haven't been able to some of the shows lately, so this is the first one I've been able to listen to for a while, so um, just checking in and seeing what the the topic of conversation was today. Well, how is the topic striking you? How is it impacting you? Well, it's interesting. I, I picked it up in the middle of the, the woman who was, who was uh, talking, and uh, so I qu- didn't quite get to just where she was, uh, you know, what the, where, where she started out from. So I was just... Uh, just checking in to see, you know, what what the general uh, flavor of the conversation was today. Okay. Well, basically where she started, she had been at some workshops that I did last week and was uh, in the uh, process of doing worksheets and getting up her mind. And so that was, uh, that was her starting point. And uh, she was starting out with some of the simpler worksheets. Yeah. And she hadn't attended the Why Is This Happening to Me Again workshop. And so she had uh, come to uh, just uh, one or two of the later workshops and then um, came to uh, to a support group that we did in Boca Raton last week before I left over there. So uh, she was uh, 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 getting on the path and ready to uh, to move some, uh, some old energy, clean life. Oh. How goes your... What's happening in your world? Well, I uh, found myself caught up in my uh, upset and anger the other day. A situation occurred where I uh, uh, found something in my space that I didn't uh, didn't appreciate, and uh, in my my studio that I have for uh, doing my work, and uh, wasn't sure how it got there, and was blaming this person and that person and and, and without really uh, and of course some people weren't talking to me so I don't know whether the, 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 you know so I found myself being upset and angry about the situation and uh, of course I did some worksheets on it uh, yeah uh, so so can I can I interrupt the conversation for a minute sure yeah so my input to you would be you weren't upset or angry about the situation. You have anger or upset in your tissue structure, and the situation resonates or brings it up for you. And when you recognize that, 
then you have the opportunity, instead of thinking that cause is out there, I'm upset because of that, to shift your language and see things differently. Oh, I have some anger about what happened. And I'm ready to move to the space where I experience what happens in my life out of the awesome active presence of love, my human life, instead of out of my anger and upset. I'm ready to change this game in my life. And so as you change that language, you change that dynamic and everything starts to show up differently in your mind. Literally, the evidence that your mind shows you will change. Okay. Does that fit? that make sense for you? Yeah. So remember, the, 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 the human mind is an evidential device. That means that it gives you only the evidence you give it permission to give you. So when I say to my mind, mind, something out there really upset me. What I'm saying to my mind is, mind, I want you to build me a picture, an image of something out there having the power to upset me. And so my mind will create an hallucination that the cause of my upset is outside of me. And now that I really believe that the cause of my upset is outside of me, my upset is now absolutely unchangeable. When I shift, and, and remember the, uh, the information we talk about, the Harvard research, it says that in a time frame where 10,000 brain cells fire, the max amount of information that goes into building our perceptual reality is nine bits. So the goal we hold and the language you use determines which nine bits of information our mind is allowed to use. So when I shift my language into, you know, this situation happened and I realized that, you know, a lot of times in my life I've had anger about things, and so this really brought my anger to the surface. Now what I want to do is be shown how to heal and forgive my anger. Then I'll get to get to the point where I can live a life totally, completely, 100% free of any kind of anger, no matter what happens in my world. But you can't Correct. do that as long as you keep telling your mind to show you that the cause is outside of you. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, you know, uh, uh, in some respect, you know, I, uh, of course, you know, I, I did the 40 days, work, five worksheets, and I'd gotten pretty good, or uh, you know, letting go of a lot of this stuff and then finding it. As again, I guess the way to, I wanted to put it is, oh, this thing showed me my anger again. That you know, there's still some there that needs to be healed. So yes, that's yeah, it. I, I agree with you totally. Um, you know, what I was basically saying was things were going pretty good, and all of a sudden, boom, this thing comes up and uh, shows its face to me again. It's like you know, so I you know I wasn't trying to say that. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, you know, in some ways I want to thank it for showing it to me again in order to heal it some, again. Awesome. Continue, awesome. continue working on letting go of that anger, as you say. You know, I mean, you'd almost think that the purpose of life was to uh, to show us what we need to heal, wouldn't you? And to give us opportunity yeah. to work on this? <laughs> All right. Well, obviously, you know, anger is one of those things that was a big issue. It, it has been a big issue in my past. So, uh, and it certainly is something, you know, as you said before, you know, you spend how many years of your life in this state, you know, is it going to take, how long does it take to heal it? You know, you know, healed in an instant. Obviously, that's true. You know, obviously, this is still coming up for me, so I need to do some more work, so. Thank you. Welcome to the human race. Here we are. <laughs> there we go. Doing what we Clean it up. Exactly. So anyway, you guys have a good day and uh, and, uh, ha and hope your New Year's going well as well. It is. Thank you, Richard. All right. Take care. Hope okay. to talk to you again soon. Okay. Lots of love. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for the call. Bye bye. Okay, we're down to about five minutes, 646-200-4444. Six,
4169, press 1. It puts you in queue to talk to Michael. There's several people in the chat room, but they're just listening. Several people on the switchboard, and they're just listening. Okay. Well, let's go back to that, you know, love God, neighbor, and self. That's been presented by those who don't love truth and uh, are, you know, locked into fear. That's been presented as some kind of a moral imperative. There is no moral imperative in the, the, the rule for sound perception, love the creator and neighbor and maintain your human life. Instead of being a moral imperative, it is a tool to lift you out of your own darkness. When you select as the most important goal in your life to keep love present, then you'll maintain your human life no matter what's on around you. And instead of that moral imperative, which, you know, people are guilty because they didn't live up to it, when you're not living up to it, you go, oh, I just broke the rule for sound perception. I think I'll do another worksheet and clear out another piece of the puzzle of my own hostility or fear. If we're taught that, you know, this love the creator and neighbor uh, is a moral imperative, then the passion for that as a moral imperative will lead to hatred for what is wrong. And that's where people get into hatred and fear toward the creator. When you recognize that it's a way to maintain the sound mind that was given to you from the beginning, everything changes. And if you lose it, you go, oh, I just lost my sound mind. Oh, okay, here's another piece of my work. As opposed to, oh, what a sinner I am. I just did greed or envy or, you know, one of the seven deadly sins. Instead of that whole moral imperative, it's just, oh, I broke the rules for perception again. I think I'll correct it. You know, it's like, you know, if if you want to watch Channel 2 on your television set, there's a rule. And the rule is you have to set the station to Channel 2. And you've got to turn the television on. There are rules in order to watch Channel 2 or to do anything. If you break the rules, then you don't get to do what you want to do. So if I want to watch Channel 2 on the television set, I first of all have to turn the television on, and then I have to tune it to Channel 2. If I say, well, I'm going to turn the television on, but I'm going to turn it to Channel 4, I just broke the rules for watching Channel 2. I don't get to watch Channel 2. (laughs) This is not a moral imperative. It's a way to keep your perception clean. It's a way to function out of your true human life. Hold the condition of love in your mind. Keep attuned. In fact, in the Aramaic language, the word that's been translated as soul properly translates as a tuning mechanism. Stay attuned to the active presence of love, and as you do, your human life will be manifest totally and completely. You will live in the sound mind that you were given from the beginning of creation. And in so doing, you'll get to live a human life, and you will become one who transforms our world. What we're looking for is a few good men and women In a true sense, a few really, truly human men and women who live as the active presence of love bring that presence of love into their lives and the lives of those around them who perhaps have no clue that it's even possible. It is not only possible, but it is necessary. And I'd offer that is our work in order to maintain a human life, to function as this awesome active presence of love is our vote for you and the space we hold for you. And we're getting down to the last few seconds of the show, so it's been delightful to have you with us. Come join us in Sarasota tonight if you're here. Come do the intensive in April if you want to come and do another level of your work. And other than that, we join you in creating the best year yet of your eternal life. Blessings. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. 
For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.yagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com.